The Stridsvagn 122 main battle tank is the absolute mainstay of the Swedish army, not only in resisting Russian military threats but also in terms of overall performance among active tanks in Europe. STRV is the abbreviation for Stridsvagn in Swedish, which translates to combat vehicle or what we commonly refer to as a tank. This tank is an improved version of the German Leopard 2A5 main battle tank and can be considered the most advanced and heavily armored variant in the Leopard 2 series. While the Leopard 2 series has been further improved to the latest Leopard 2A7 version, the Swedish Stridsvagn 122, based on the Leopard 2A5, is still referred to as the strongest Leopard 2. First, let's look at the origin of the Stridsvagn 122 tank. To talk about this tank, we naturally need to discuss the Leopard 2 tank. The German Leopard 2 main battle tank only gradually matured with the Leopard 2A4 variant, specifically from the 5th to 8th batches. However, as time went on, the German military realized the insufficient firepower and protection of the Leopard 2A4. They then developed the KWS upgrade program to enhance the firepower and protection of the Leopard 2 tank. This program led to the development of the 55 caliber main gun found on later versions like the Leopard 2A6. In terms of protection, it gave rise to the installation of frontal wedge-shaped armor, which started with the Leopard 2A5. As early as the fifth batch of Leopard 2A4 production, the German armed forces modified one tank into the Leopard 2 KVT, which stands for Component Test Vehicle. This was the first time additional armor was installed on the front of the Leopard 2 tank. After evaluating this vehicle extensively, the German armed forces selected two tanks from the 8th batch, the last batch of Leopard 2A4 tanks, and converted them into Leopard 2 TVM experimental vehicles. While Germany was tinkering with their new tank, the Swedish main battle tank project was aborted due to funding issues. Prior to that, the Swedish army mainly relied on the domestically developed Stridsvagn 103 main battle tank, which was more like a tank destroyer equipped by various countries during World War II. The Stridsvagn 103 did not have a turret but relied on the rotation of the hull and hydraulic suspension to adjust the gun's direction and elevation angle. Therefore, the Stridsvagn 103 clearly could not adapt to the new operational environment, and the Swedish army urgently needed a new type of main battle tank. On November 11, 1991, after a series of evaluations, Sweden reached out to four countries, the United Kingdom, France, Germany, and the United States. The tanks developed by these four countries represented the cutting-edge level of Western main battle tanks at the time. They were the Challenger 2 from the UK, the Leclerc from France, the Leopard 2 KWS program from Germany, and the M1A2 from the United States. The gathering of these four most advanced main battle tanks in the world was an unprecedented and spectacular event. Let's first take a look at the overall situation of these selected vehicles. The Leopard 2 and M1 main battle tanks had the most balanced performance. However, at that time, the Leopard 2's KWS program was still an experimental prototype. Its reliability was obviously not as good as the well-tested M1. Although the M1A2 was the latest model of the M1 series at the time, its main upgrades were in the internal electronics and sensors, with no major changes to its main structure. Therefore, it had relatively higher reliability. The UK's Challenger 2 and France's Leclerc were relatively niche. The Challenger 2 had the strongest protection among these tanks, thanks to the addition of Chobham composite armor. Its frontal and turret protection capabilities were excellent. On the other hand, the Leclerc was the lightest tank among these tanks, and it had only three crew members due to its autoloader design. The Leclerc had a compact size, an impressive power-to-weight ratio, and a high degree of information, making it quite advanced. However, the first round of eliminations included the UK's Challenger 2 and France's Leclerc. The primary consideration for the Swedish army was the adaptability of the various main battle tanks in the cold Swedish weather. As a Nordic country, 
Sweden needed to ensure that the purchased tank would be able to function effectively in snowy conditions. The Challenger 2 was the first to be eliminated due to its engine power of only 1200 horsepower, the lowest among the tanks considered. It struggled to adapt to the snow-covered terrain. Additionally, the Challenger 2 was equipped with a rifled gun, which had fewer ammunition options compared to the other tanks. Since the Swedish army had a limited number of tanks, they needed versatility in their tank's firepower. Consequently, the Challenger 2 was quickly disqualified. During mobility tests, the Leclerc main battle tank performed exceptionally well. It was approximately 8 tons lighter than its heaviest competitor, giving it a superior power-to-weight ratio. The Leclerc maneuvered swiftly on the test grounds. However, at that time, the Leclerc was still in the development stage, and its reliability was severely lacking, particularly in its fire control system, which significantly affected its scoring in the shooting phase. Furthermore, the Swedish evaluators discovered several issues with the Leclerc that would require substantial effort to resolve. Ultimately, Leclerc was also eliminated. In retrospect, the Swedish decision was wise, as French equipment tends to be relatively expensive and prone to minor issues. The Leclerc eventually became the most expensive third-generation main battle tank. Only two tanks remained in the competition, the upgraded German Leopard 2 tank and the export version of the American M1A2 tank. Both tanks were comparable in terms of firepower and shooting accuracy. The next phase of testing focused on the tank's protection capabilities. The Swedish team introduced their own composite armor, which delivered impressive results. In practical tests, this armor increased the frontal protection capabilities of the M1A2 and the upgraded Leopard 2 by 50% to 100%. Ultimately, the Leopard 2, equipped with the new armor, emerged as the winner of the competition among the four major NATO countries. It was a fitting choice for Sweden, as they had previously purchased a batch of Leopard 2A4 tanks from the German armed forces, which were part of the Cold War era stock. Opting for the Leopard 2 also considered the availability of spare parts and logistical considerations. Choosing the American M1A2 would have posed compatibility issues with various systems. Overall, the selection of the Leopard 2 by Sweden was well deserved. It met the requirements of the Swedish Army, and the previous acquisition of Leopard 2A4 tanks from Germany further supported its suitability. The decision also factored in considerations of spare parts availability and logistical pressures. Opting for the American M1A2 would have introduced challenges in terms of system compatibility. After joining the Swedish Army, the Leopard 2A5 was renamed the Stridsvagn 122. It is the most advanced variant derived from the Leopard 2A5. The Swedish version of the Leopard 2A5 had additional, thicker armor, increasing its weight to around 62 tons. The turret and frontal armor were reinforced, and improvements were made to the command and fire control systems. The Stridsvagn 122 was the first main battle tank in Europe to be equipped with a command and control system. All command and fire control commands were automatically operated by computers. Automatic target tracking and locking took only 5 seconds, and it could engage 6 targets within a minute with a hit rate of up to 99%. Additionally, the tank was equipped with the Galix protection system from the French company GIAT. It had two 80mm six-barrel launchers on each side of the turret, with six launch tubes in total. They were arranged in two groups, facing forward, sideways, and rearward diagonally. The tank could launch smoke grenades, decoys, high-explosive fragmentation rounds, and other ammunition, providing close-range defense capability. Compared to the original Leopard 2A5, the Stridsvagn 122 had additional armor added to the front of the hull. The interior walls were equipped with extensive fiberglass protection layers throughout all crew compartments. Thicker armor skirts were also installed on the sides of the hull to protect the suspension system. The driver, commander, and loader had more heavily armored hatches. Furthermore, to enhance protection, a new type of fuel tank with an anti-explosion liquid interlayer was used. 
A detector was installed in the engine compartment, which would automatically cut off the intake fan and close the air intake when detecting a fire. To accommodate the increased weight from the modifications, an upgraded suspension and braking system were fitted. The tank had a new two-color camouflage for better blending into the Nordic terrain. After the modifications carried out by Sweden, the Stridsvagn 122 became the most sophisticated and heavily armored version in the Leopard 2 series, alongside the French Leclerc, ranking among the world's most advanced main battle tanks. The Swedish army claimed that no current anti-armor weapon, including 120mm tank cannons and top-attack anti-tank missiles, could penetrate the armor of the Stridsvagn 122. Currently, the Swedish army has a total of 120 units of this tank, which, together with the CV-90 infantry fighting vehicle, forms the core assault force of the Swedish ground forces. That concludes this video. What do you think of the performance of the Swedish Stridsvagn 122 tank? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section.